Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about general planar kinetics in multi-body systems. So, Newton's second law in kinetics, uh, we are building directly on Newton's second law, which states that F equals ma, uh, and in rigid bodies, we've got m equals i alpha. So this is the same as we've been talking about for the rest of the chapter. Um, and if we put uh, the known forces, moments, masses, mass moments of inertia into these equations, we get our equations of motion, which we're going to solve uh, for unknowns, either forces, moments, or accelerations. All right, so general planar motion and multi-body systems. Uh, general planar motion, again, refers to instances where a body is both translating and rotating at the same time. Uh, the example we used in the previous section was a tire rolling along the ground. Uh, in multi-body systems, we have uh, different connected pieces uh, that are related to one another, but we have um, independent motion of the, the various pieces. So a, an industrial robotic arm is a prime example of this. Uh, we've got multiple pieces. They're all going to have their own accelerations, uh, but they are all connected uh, via, via these various joints. All right, so... The first step in all of these systems is these multi-body kinetics problems start with a kinematics problem. So you're going to need to know uh, you're going to need to know the acceleration and angular acceleration of each of those pieces. Uh, so you can use absolute motion analysis, uh, ro uh, relative motion analysis, uh, or rotating frame analysis, whichever is easiest for you. So again, we need to know the acceleration and angular acceleration of the center of mass of each body within the system, so each component in the design. All right, so with the multi-body systems, the core of the analysis is breaking down the multi-body system into individual components and analyzing each component separately. So for our robotic arm, uh, each component would be each rigid body. So the joints are where we separate this out. So uh, piece number one would probably be this piece right here. Piece number two would be the second section of the arm. And piece number three would be the third section of the arm. The joints are where uh, we separate these things. So each piece is going to have its own free body diagram, and each piece is going to have its own equations of motion that we're going to have to solve. So some of these pieces might have more unknowns than we can initially solve for, uh, but what ties everything together is Newton's third law, uh, ensuring that forces and moments are equal and opposite at the connection points. Uh, so if we have a kind of simplified version of our robotic arm here with points A, B, and C, uh, if we were to split that into, or sorry, it, we've got various uh, motions, so each of those pieces is rotating. Uh, if we split this into member A, B, and member B, C, uh, we would have a separate free body diagram, so we've drawn them separated here. Uh, we've done our kinematics, so we know the uh, accelerations and angular acceleration of the center of each of these pieces. Uh, so we'd have at point A, we've got basically uh, a pin joint with a motor accelerating it. So we're going to have forces in the X, Y, and we're going to have a moment. Uh, so point B, we'd also have forces in the X, the Y, and the moment. Uh, point, point B is the connection point. So when we draw the forces and moments on member AB, we have to draw them equal and opposite. So the forces are going in the opposite directions. So FBY over here uh, was going up, it's going down over here. FBX was going to the right over here, it's going to the left over here. Uh, and the moment is uh, was going counterclockwise here, it's going clockwise on this end. So make sure you have those forces equal and opposite. Uh, and what I was talking about is uh, with the solving for too many unknowns. So member BC has only got three, if we know the accelerations, we've only got, we've got two unknown forces and an unknown moment. Uh, over on this side, on member AB, we've got four unknown forces and two unknown moments. Now that's more than we can solve for with our three equations. But if we solve for uh, FBX, FBY, and MB over with this piece, uh, they are, we know they're equal and opposite. They become known values going into this. That's going to allow us to solve for FAX, FAY, and MA uh, once we already know these pieces. All right, so the equations of motion again, for each of those components, it's going to be uh, sum of forces in the x is equal to mass times acceleration in the x. Sum of forces in the y is equal to mass times acceleration in the y. 
uh, and sum of moments about the center of mass is equal to mass moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Uh, remember, all of these refer to the center of body or center of mass of each of those individual pieces. Uh, and um, this also applies to the moments and the mass moment of inertia as well. So the overall process, just as a review, uh, so step number one, again, go ahead, solve the kinematics problem. You're probably going to have to uh, figure that out beforehand. Um, so we've got various options for that, but you need to know the acceleration uh, and angular acceleration of the center point of each of these pieces. Uh, you're going to set up a free body diagram for each component. So draw each body separated from its surroundings and separated from other pieces in the system. Draw in all of the known and unknown forces, uh, as well as known and unknown moments. Um, and then uh, draw in your accelerations as well, as well as key dimensions, key angles, etc. So draw your free body diagrams. Uh, step three, use your free body diagram to write out the equations of motion, breaking all forces down into X and Y components, uh, writing out all of the moments about the center of mass of the body. Uh, once you have all of those equations set up, you simply solve the equations for any unknowns. All right, that's all I've got for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.